Number one says find x, round to the nearest integer. So what we have is a right triangle, we're missing one side. And remember using the Pythagorean theorem, we have two legs and a hypotenuse, and it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. All we have to do is substitute the numbers in. So this leg is four, so that's four squared. This leg, I don't know, it's x. So it's x squared. And the hypotenuse is nine, so it's nine squared. So four squared, four times four is 16. Then I have, oops, I forgot my plus in there. Then I have uh, x squared. And then a nine squared, nine times nine is 81. Now I want x by itself, so I'm gonna have to subtract. Get rid of this 16. So I'll subtract 16 on both sides. And that's gone. And that leaves us with x squared and 81 minus 16. If you can't do it in your head, go ahead and borrow. Okay, that's a seven, that's 11. 11 minus six is five. Seven minus six is six. So 65. So what do we do now? We wanna know what x is. We don't care about x squared. So I'll take the square root and that will give me x is approximately square root is 65. So 65, we want the rent nearest integer to 65, and that would be eight, because eight times eight is 64, so that's his closest. Number two, do the following three side lengths form a right triangle? Does it form right, in other words, does a Pythagorean theorem work? Does L squared plus L squared equals H squared? Now wait a minute, let's identify which ones are the which ones are hypotenuse and which ones are the legs. The longest side is always a hypotenuse. So this is the longest. And the longest is a hypotenuse. Right? So that, that's gotta go over there. So let's see. Uh, we have one leg of two and another leg of four, and our hypotenuse is six. So we have two, excuse me, two, and the other one is four. And the longest side of hypotenuse has to be six. Okay, so I just substitute those in there. These two are the legs, and that's a hypotenuse. Okay, now I calculate this out, and let's see. Two square. I want to know, does this side equal the other side? That's why the question mark is there with the equals. Two squared is four. Two times two is four. Four times four, 16. And six times six is 36. Well, four plus 16, that's 20. And then that side's 36. So the question, does this equal? Yes or no? Excuse me. I'm sorry, lost track. Does this equal yes or no? Does 20 equal 36? No. So what does that tell you? Is it a right triangle? No, no it's not. Because those the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work. So if the Pythagorean theorem works, it's a right triangle. If it doesn't work, it's not a right triangle. And the three sides would be called a Pythagorean triple if it does work, but this one doesn't. Okay, number three at the top. Okay, number three, it says circle which is equivalent to four to the third times four to the fifth. Which is a correct answer? And the correct answer is four to the eighth. Okay, now I have to show why, why is that? Well, that's because if I take four to the third, that's four three times, and then I take four to the fifth, that is four five times. And that will give us four to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four to the eighth power. 
Now, if you know the rules, you know you'd simply add the exponents. But if you don't know the rules, go ahead and spread them out. And there you go. Number four, circle which is equivalent to four to the fifth divided by four thirds. Which one is the correct answer? C is also the correct answer. Why is that? Well, let's see. I have five fours up on top. There's five of them. And on the bottom, I have three of them. And if I reduce, right, these reduce to one, this reduce to one, yada yada. And what are you left with? Four squared. Four to the second power. That's why. Now if you if you would have known uh, the rules of exponents, you would just subtract the exponents. But if you did not, just go ahead and expand it out and then reduce. Number five, simplify this expression here. I'm just going to expand everything out. So if I expand this out, that's two times three and then five x's. Okay, well on the bottom I have a three and it looks like I have three x's. X to the third. And I'm just going to skip with the putting the times in between them. And now if I reduce all that, you see the threes reduce, and then the x's reduce. I'm just going to go like this, another pair, and another pair. And so what are we left with? Two on top, and hey, we have two x's on top. Nothing left on the bottom except just ones. So that would be x squared. 2x squared is simplified. Now if you want to, you can just take a look. 3 goes into 6 two times, so you have 2 up on top. And if you know the rules of exponents, 5 minus 3 is 2, so it's x squared. Okay, number 6, simplify. So another expression. So basically we have 3a squared three times. Okay, so if I wrote that out, this is what I'd have. I'd have 3a squared multiplied three times. Now what I'm going to do is just to make to simplify things, and you could probably do it in your head now, but I'm going to go ahead and use it as the commutative property and move things around. So I have a three, another three, and another three. And then with a's, I've got two a's there. I've got another two a's and another two a's. So what does that leave me with? Well, three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. And then for my a's, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So 27 a to the six is it reduced. Now, if you would know your rules from exponents, it would simply be this. Um, this is a one right there, and what you want to do is multiply the exponents. So this would be three. Three times one is three. And then a to the three times two is six. And of course, three to the third is 27, so 27 a to the six. That's using the rules of exponents. But if you don't know that, simply expand. Expand them out and you will see the answer.